Uh, it's gonna be a hot one here again today. They're doing some uh, road maintenance on the uh, the road. What a good thing to do uh, maintenance on, huh? Uh, it's already uh, approaching 100 degrees. It's 8 o'clock in the morning here in Arizona. And I know it gets hot everywhere else during summer, but it sure seems to get hot here too. Uh, there's a, another quick video about the medic ACs that I've been noticing lately. And uh, this one happens to be a brisk air too. My customer installed this one or had it installed almost three years ago. And the fan motor has gone out on it. I only break this video because I think this is happening a lot more than it really should be at this point. And it's really been on uh, Dometic. I know um, I've replaced uh, two AC units in the last uh, year where this fan motor went out because uh, it was outside warranty. I replaced, this was a Penguin uh, roof AC last year I did and my customer from Texas called me and told me that his fan motor went out. And it's still under warranty, so he's gonna try to get a service there in Texas. And I got this one, and I had about two or three other ones. And these are all the newer Dometics. I don't know exactly what's going on with these motors. I suspect that you're not using a high quality motor manufacturer, because it's usually the bearings that are going out. And it's generally from running continuously, which you have to do here in Arizona. So let's take a look. So here it is, the Brisk Air 2. This is their, uh, Entry level model, I guess you would call it. It's not a low profile. Not any of them are really high efficiency, but. My customer called me out because his AC wouldn't work. Obviously, the compressor would run, but the fan wasn't blowing any air. You could just hear it humming, which has been a pretty common problem on these. Uh, I came out and I took a look at it, and I could feel how stiff the bearings were on it but I did manage to free it up and I gave him the option of ordering a new motor new AC or just seeing how long that uh, lasted and uh, that lasted a day so he, he had me order it and here I am today replacing the motor now these ACs are really lightweight and I'm not gonna say Cheap. They're just highly engineered because uh, this this right here this is just like styrofoam I mean it's a more durable styrofoam but it's just expanded foam of course right here is the motor it's not a very difficult replacement so this is your outside blower wheel and the inside blower wheel it all runs off one motor nice compact unit like that see when I spin that see how it really doesn't spin very well it should be free spinning for quite some time. A lot of resistance on this. And if they look at the uh, blower wheel from continuous operation, it's really quite dirty. And you can almost make out some dust on here from where it's been rubbing on this shroud. Again, not to disparage Dometic too much because I know they have to make these over in China and ship them and then there's a whole tariff on them. Uh, I've had brand new units where this foam is deformed and so it like rubs on this fan. These plastic blower wheels, I don't know if you can kind of see how uh, off center that, that is, how uh, wobbly that is. I don't know if it's the shaft or the wheel itself or both. So it's not surprising about that. Uh, so all I'm gonna end up doing is undoing the, the bolts and the wires and putting a new one on. I actually got new a blades a new wheel to put on and we'll see how this goes but again that should turn a lot better than that and not lock up so fast okay so i got the 516 nuts taken off of there took off the uh, panel to the uh, the capacitor right there and follow the wires over on this side cut some zip ties cut the uh, p-clamp off or unscrewed that with the 516 and then actually unplugged the uh, the harness from the uh, control board down there because the new motor has comes with the pins already on it so I have to put those in the uh, that that quick connect pin too but at any rate there's the new motor let's see if we can't get this done fairly quickly all right so normally I use uh, my uh, pin pushing tools 
for doing these pin connectors, but these are just gonna be punched in with the base of the uh, connector right there and then lock into place. So all you have to do is uh, put some pressure on the back side of that plug right there, or that clip, and then you're gonna pull it apart. Of course, make sure you put them all back in the right direction. Now I'm not gonna go through the hassle of trying to feed the wires through this uh, black casing. I don't know, maybe. Nah, probably not. I'll just tape it alongside of it. Uh, obviously, you could butt connect this together because technically this is contained within a, its own appliance. But butt connectors aren't great. That's one more place where it could go wrong. And this is actually 110 wiring that we're hooking up. That, that motor is uh, powered with 110 power, so it's not low voltage. So these connectors would be the best to use. So. So let's see if we can't slide that off. All right, so there we are slid off. Now we can kind of see how those are forked, segmented. When this uh, top part goes down, it actually pushes down and pushes those uh, segmented places onto these pins and locks it into place. So with this outer casing removed, they should pull out pretty easily and then you just do a one for one swap. Don't pull them all out at the same time. Obviously we have red, green, black, and uh, yellow. Oh, because we have high and low fan speeds. Okay, so we'll just match up the colors and uh, get this done. Uh, guys, I didn't point out, but I do have uh, the power turned off to this thing, so this isn't live, so don't be worrying about my life. And if you're gonna be doing this, don't have power hooked up when you're messing around with this. There's a hole through the motor mount right there. Make sure you feed your wires from the motor through it before you hook up to your uh, your plug. That'll save you a hassle in the future. I forgot, you should really put, uh, put a mark on the top so you know which way it goes back on because this side is keyed, but the other side isn't. We didn't want to plug that in backwards. Okay, so if we were to grab this yellow one and let's see what we can do. So all I did was focus push it down and then I'm gonna pull it out. Needle nose will make it easier. One-handed makes it difficult. Ah, look at that. That one's out. To put the other one in, I just grab the yellow one. And then we'll push it in. Again, one-handed makes this more difficult. If you just do it one at a time, you won't mess anything up. Look at that. Just two more to go, black and red. All right, well I got all three of those put on. Let's see. There's my mark on that side, and there's its matching mark. And this should just snap into place. And looking down in there, everything looks like it's in the right position. I just have to pull out these, uh wires that we don't need anymore, so I guess that's black. Alright. And there's all the wires pulled out. Now we can just hook up the uh, motor. Well, not really. I still have to disconnect the capacitor. Alright, I'm not going to go through the hassle of taking these uh, blades off because I'm putting new ones on anyway, so I just got this thing kind of right back out of the way, right? And now I can see which brown one is going to it. There it is. And it had one ground. Oh, sorry, there's also a neutral, makes sense. Let's get rid of the white one. Okay, there we go. Now just put the new one in. All right, so we don't stress this expensive, uh, highly engineered foam. We're gonna put the uh, outside impeller blader in the opening right there. Or in the housing there. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Make sure we can get to that, because if it was on the other side, we couldn't get to it. And then 
That's going to be the long side of the motor. It goes to that. So it's going to be easier with the motor out to put this thing on first. And again, they're keyed, so there's a flat spot. So we just put that on, then we'll put it into place. I right, just set it down in place, make sure we didn't chafe any of the wires. Just make sure that they're not tightened up against anything. All right. So we're looking really good there. And uh, with this one in place now, we can just line that up. Sometimes you can add a little bit of lubricant, but you shouldn't add, need to add too much. There we go. Maybe I can reach through and feel the other side. Ooh, it's just barely shooting. You don't have going through so it just goes all the way back against the end there and then this one we want to make sure is centered inside of our special foam here which it looks like it is okay we're doing great guys now we just have to put the nuts on the washers pretty much everything up here is 5 16 too so that works out pretty well there, tight to do it kind of like a tire. You know, I don't always trust my impact because I can't feel exactly how good it is tightening. So I'll generally put a ratchet on there just so I can know that it's tight and not over tight. Sometimes you can break these little bolts off with the impact. And we're feeling pretty good there. Obviously I won't use the impact on the fan blades. But with this tight now it'll be easier to, to tighten up the fan blades without a worrying about it. So I'm gonna do that, hook the wires, and then we'll be ready to fire this thing up. And I'm just on the other side. And I got my wires just taped around the harness there. Motor's installed, the wires are hooked up. I have to zip tie those and put the cover back on. But if I spin that, you can see how well it just keeps freewheeling there. So that's a little bit better than uh, before where it would stop almost immediately. All right, so let's get this thing plugged in and start it up. Okay. Get back in there. Put our special well engineered cover back on. Make sure nothing's rubbing, right? Look at that. Alright, I don't hear it rubbing. Now we can go turn it on. Alright, let's just try it on fan first. Ooh, I turned the fan turned on right away. Alright, so I have high and low fan operation. That's high. That's low. Let's go ahead and turn on the cool. Alright, well that's nice and cold. That's great. So we're going to call this job good. Let's uh, review ourselves, okay? Uh, well, I'll do this part in the shade. So you have a Dometic Brisk Air 2. I think this was a 13.5 BTU uh, AC only. The fan motor went out. We just replaced the fan motor and the blower wheels. So here's the motor. Ugh. Said the lower wheel is pretty well impacted. No real reason to put this one back on. It'll probably fall apart as it's plastic. That's kind of gross the amount of dirt that came out of there. And these are pretty inexpensive. So for the outside or the indoor blower wheel itself, there's your part number. The Medic's part number is right there. For the outside blower or fan blade, there's your Dometic part number. And the most important one is obviously right here. Dometic part number for the motor itself. So this is just an off-the-shelf motor. I'm sure you could uh, order it by a different number on there. Now get it straight from Dometic. There it is, guys. I'm already hot.
But I'm sure it won't come up very well on video, but we're spinning pretty well. It's going a lot faster than it looks like it's going. That's cool. Uh, let me just put this back together, zip tie everything up, and then I'll turn the AC on. I don't want to run it too long without the uh, shroud on. Okay. Alright, so with that installed, I can go ahead and turn the AC on and clean up my mess out here.